Hey YouTube, Eugene here. Hope you guys are all well. Um, I'm kind of settled here at my parents' house as uh, I'm kind of in the middle of a, a moving process, so my house isn't really ready yet, and all my fragrances are away in storage. In the meantime, I, I kind of wanted to keep everything together and not pull bottles here and there with me. Uh, just kind of funny that way, but in the meantime, I have picked up Invasion Barbar. I've had this for a while. I've been wearing it quite a bit as it was the only fragrance that I had. But since then, I've kind of picked up a couple of other things here. Um, actually, they've all been from Guerlain. Um, here, last week, I've, I've gotten Habi Rouge. This is the EDT, um, the 60s classic. I have worn this once as it's, it's not really season uh, appropriate for, for wintertime in Canada. This is all about citruses. And this is kind of a harsh, outdated uh, take on, uh, you know, Neroli, bergamot, lemon, um, some herbal qualities, um, lavender possibly, and uh, vanilla. But uh, as outdated as it is, I, I do enjoy it. And uh, I look forward to wearing this in uh, warmer seasons. Now, last week, I've also picked up this. And I really don't know what possessed me because the first time I tried this about four or five years ago, I can say it was literally the worst thing I've ever put on my skin um, saying that, I mean, it kind of reminded me of a grandpa with really nasty halitosis breath. Just, I couldn't do it. And I, I, <laughs> really, I don't know why I, I brought this home with me, but uh, I, I just saw it and it was relatively affordable. So I just picked it up without even smelling it. And it does smell a little bit different to me now than from what I remember. It had this really nasty, um, harsh, dry tobacco note in there that I couldn't stand. And although it's not as strong, it is still there. I, I'm picking it up in the mid notes, but uh, I haven't worn this yet. I've been spraying it on my skin, just on my arm, um, kind of easing my way into this. But uh, it is something that I'm going to try wearing once the warmer weather hits here. Uh, probably a couple more weeks. It's still relatively cold here in Canada. Um... But yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm still not really sure how I feel, but um, it's all about vetiver. This is Guerlain's uh, reference vetiver fragrance. It's got some citrus, uh, lemon. It's very earthy, rooty, dry. Uh, does have that dry tobacco note in there. Um, a little bit of dirtiness. Um, and I don't mean earthy, dirty, soily dirt. It's I'm not really sure where it's coming from, but I am picking up a little bit of dirtiness, a little bit of soap. Um, it feels a little bit salty to me. So, yeah, we'll see where this goes. But I, I've picked up quite a few Guerlains lately, and I, I have been enjoying all of them. Um, up in storage, I have a couple. I've picked up a couple exclusives, uh, Middle Eastern exclusives. Um, I picked up one from the woman's... Uh, um, it's a classic woman's fragrance. I won't say too much now. I'll do a haul when I get my um, fragrances out of storage. And I picked up one that's just recently been discontinued. So I am excited to uh, get those back from storage. But this came in the other day. And I'm really pleased with this. This is Habi Rouge Dress Code. This is um, just an ode. The 50th 50, 50 anniversary ode to the original Habi Rouge. This is uh, pretty close to the original, the only difference being it's much more sweet and it almost hits gourmand uh, territory with uh, notes of vanilla, praline, and chocolate, but it's got this rather dominant leather note with some smoke that just pulls it out from entering gourmand. So I'm really enjoying this. I'm glad I got it and uh, I, I do look forward to wearing this. It's a fantastic flanker to Habit Rouge. Okay, so now on to Invasion Bar Bar. This is a, a fragrance released in 2005 by perfumer Stephanie Bakouche. At the time, MDCI have only had one fragrance released, and that was Ombre Top K. Um, Claude Marshall, the owner of MDCI, kind of met with Stephanie Bakouche, and she was really interested in getting her fragrance out, so she gave him a sample. And what she really wanted to create was a dominant um, barbershop-style uh, fragrance. So 
she wanted to make something really strong and masculine, but also at the same time something very elegant, sensual, and uh, just really um, something for the man of every woman's dream. Now, the name Invasion Barbar, what I think that really means is um, not really an invasion. This isn't a very barbaric fragrance, but I think she was meaning um, just an invasion of a barbershop fragrance. Now, after wearing this for a while, I don't, really don't see this as a fougere. It's actually classified as an oriental fougere, which I think is more appropriate. Um, fougere, there is um, herbal qualities to this and there is lavender, but I wouldn't consider this a full fougere. Notes in this are, oh, I can't even remember. I haven't jotted them down, but I'm going to go off the top of my head. Uh, grapefruit, bergamot. Uh, white thyme, spices of uh, cardamom, ginger, we got lavender, patchouli, vanilla, and musk. That's what it is. So what does this smell like to me? When I spray this on, I'm instantly hit with grapefruit and bergamot, but it's not like cutting into a grapefruit or a bergamot. It's not very juicy. To me, it's more about let's say peeling the skin off and, and then folding that skin back and having a smell of that. And right after that comes some thyme. And the thyme does give it a little bit of herbal quality and the lavender gives it, the lavender is not so herbal as we know that old fashioned lavender. This is a very modern lavender, more on the soapy side. Um, along with the lavender, come these notes of uh, these spices of uh, ginger and cardamom and, and to me they're really what makes this fragrance because when they're popping it's like literally one of my favorite things I've ever smelled in perfume are these 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 spicy notes are jumping off my skin um the base we're left I, don't, I really don't get much patchouli in this I, I actually I've been looking for it. I know patchouli is a listed note. I've yet to come across any patchouli. Um, I forgot to mention violet leaf was a note in here. Um, I also struggled with the violet leaf, but I kind of referenced some other violet fragrances that I'm uh, aware of, like the Mesia. Chanel's Mesia is a violet based fragrance, and the violet in there is very sweet. It's candied and it's dry. Um, Serge Luton's Un Bois Violet is, is sort of the same thing. It's very candied and sweet. Now, after referencing those, I kind of did pick up a candied sweetness in there along with some powderiness. And what it smells like to me is if you were to just take some, you know, that Pez candy that came out of dispensers, if you just kind of like mash that up between your fingers, it's very candied and sweet and powdery. And that's what I kind of get the violet leaf in here. That's what it smells like to me. And the base is really, um, it's a warm leathery vanilla. Now by leathery, I'm not saying there's a leather note. It's more of a leathery vanilla vibe with some white musks. Now, how do I feel about this fragrance? Um, I think it's a brilliantly created fragrance. Um, it's very well tuned. It's top quality materials. It's done to perfection. The notes are seamless. To me, it all kind of smells like it's one big smell and it's very hard to pick the notes apart. And the main part of this fragrance for me are those spicy notes, the way they pop off the skin and the way they contrast with um, the fresh citrus and the fresh violet florals. It's just very stunning. Now, the problem I have with this fragrance is all the other times the spices aren't popping off my skin. I feel like it's just kind of 
um, I'm left wanting more. Um, and that's actually quite disappointing after hearing so much about Invasion Barbar. Um, I didn't buy this blind. I did have a sample and I did reference my sample and I love my sample. Um, and once I started wearing it, I just kind of noticed that as, as well built and as beautiful as this fragrance is, it's not really enough to keep me interested. Um, Luca Turin, the world renowned perfume critic, he's, if you don't know who Luca Turin is, he's the only critic that matters if you're into reviewers. Um, he gave this five out of five stars, which is, he doesn't give out very often, called it a masterpiece. I'd like to see him take one of those stars away just for the lack of interest in this fragrance. I'm not knocking it. Um, it is a great fragrance. It's just missing a little bit of excitement. Um, would I endorse this fragrance? At the cost of this, I don't think I would. And more importantly, if I had to repurchase this fragrance, would I? I don't think I would. Um, I'm happy to have it and I look forward to, I don't know if I'll ever finish the bottle. I look forward to wearing it again, but after getting to know it for a bit, I don't think I would repurchase Invasion Bar Bar. That's just my opinion and that's how I feel. Um, compliments, I haven't really gotten any compliments. My wife, she really likes it. Um, she says it's very relaxing and uh, soothing, which, which I agree with her, it totally is. Um, and it, it kind of, she says it reminds her of just going to a spa and getting a massage or relaxing, because that, that's really what it is. It's like a meditative fragrance, uh, very relaxing. My kids asked them what they thought. One son said it reminded him of sunshine. And the other kid said it smells like happiness. So take that as you will. But when, when he said sunshine, it kind of reminded me of what Amouage did with lavender. And they named a fragrance sunshine after the main note of lavender. So maybe um, people interpret lavender as sunshine. I'm not really sure. Invasion Barbar. Bar. Have you smelled Invasion Barbar? Bar? What do you think? Is it exciting enough to own? Let us know in the comments below. Guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again.